Um, so I'm a transplant surgeon here, and I wanted to tell you all a little bit about how this all came to be. Um, about six years ago, we were transplanting HIV positive patients with HIV negative organs, and they were doing very well. And it occurred to us that there are thousands of patients with HIV in need of kidney transplants, liver transplants, etc., who were waiting on waiting lists and suffered high risks of dying while waiting for these organs that they needed. And at the same time, we were throwing away organs from donors infected with HIV just because they were infected with HIV. These were potentially perfectly good organs for these patients. Why were we throwing away these organs? Because the laws written in the 1980s forbid the transplantation of organs infected with HIV. At that time in the 1980s, this made sense because HIV AIDS was a deadly disease, but the disease has progressed, the, uh, the treatment of this disease and our ability to control this disease has progressed dramatically in the last decades, and uh, Christine Durand will tell you more about that. So, it occurred to us that really we needed to change this law, and that would take an act of Congress. The first thing we did was we did some research to try to estimate the impact that HIV positive donors would have on the waiting list, which means how many potential donors are out there and how many lives would be saved. Using data that we uh, obtained from the HIV Research Network, and I'd like to acknowledge their contribution to all of this, we were able to estimate that about 300 to 500 donors would be available every year for about 1,000 transplants. So that's a huge number of transplants that could potentially happen if this law were to change. So then the next thing we did was partner with a bunch of uh, HIV and medical and transplant advocacy groups and write the HIV Organ Policy Equity Act, the HOPE Act. Anytime I talk about the HOPE Act, I have to uh, mention and acknowledge Brian Boyarski, who was in our group at the time and was really one of the biggest forces to move this act uh, across the hill. We got a lot of traction on the Hill, and the HOPE Act was signed into law uh, in November of 2013 by President Obama. This opened the opportunity for HRSA and UNOS, the United Network for Organ Sharing, to change national policy to allow us to use these organs. That policy took a couple of years to change so that we could make sure to do this as safely as possible, and we worked hand in hand with them to establish these policies. We established policy and safety protocols here at Johns Hopkins, and we're very proud to announce that a couple of weeks ago, we performed the first HIV to HIV liver transplant in the world and the first HIV to HIV kidney transplant in the United States.